In a recent video, I showed you how to export or share a song file from your finished GarageBand project. But what about if instead you want to share or export the project itself, all of your tracks and all of your project information? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. Now, when you finish your GarageBand projects, what you usually want to do is release a mixed down stereo version, which is what I showed you in the previous video. But what about if you want to actually export or share or back up for your own use your GarageBand project files? Well, in this video, we're going to dive into GarageBand here on my iPhone, and I'm going to show you how. Here we are once again in GarageBand iOS on my iPhone. Phone. Now, if you watched the previous video, this one's going to be quite familiar because the opening steps are exactly the same. We're going to tap the top left here. We're going to go My Songs. Now, we're going to tap on Select in the top right corner. We're going to tap on Never to Blame version 5. And now these four icons at the bottom, we're going to tap the leftmost, our box with our arrow, and we're going to tap on that. Now, this time, instead of selecting Song or Ringtone, we're going to select Project. So let's tap on Project, and this is going to send my entire project file including all the multi-track recordings, all the effects, all the plugins, all the all the settings to another device, to another location, to another application. So this time around, I've got my other phone here, my other iPhone here, IP5S PJ. And what I'll do is I'll show you how we airdrop first of all. So if we tap on my face there, it's going to bring it up and through the magic of editing, I'm showing you the other screen now, which is my other phone accepting this airdrop. So it will go ahead, it is now sending that entire GarageBand project. And I use this method a lot for transferring between my iPad and my iPhone and my, my two iPhones that I have here to back up my projects and to share them. So if I'm working on my iPad and then I wanna go out on the go, you can very quickly send your project over. And there you go, you can see here on the iPhone 5S it's done and now it wants to know where I want to open it. So I can either save it to my files down the bottom there or even easier, let's tap on GarageBand and what it's going to do is open up GarageBand in just a few moments and it will show us our GarageBand file. So it's just giving me some updates here and here it is. We've popped it in. There it is in my GarageBand recent, never to blame version five. I can tap on this now and open this up. Now I don't have some of the same plugins installed here on this phone at the moment. So that's one thing to keep in mind is if you're transferring projects, you need to have a compatible device that's gonna have the same plugins and the same things that you have on your other device and it needs to be the same version too. So the same version of GarageBand with a similar sort of device. So that is the first way and the easiest way to transfer our GarageBand project from one device to another. Okay, so if we scroll down here, we can see that we have the options here to send this to another app. So these are all the different apps that we have now. They're not gonna be much good to you here, apart from some of the ones where you copy them to say Dropbox and others, but even those have their limitations. The reason being that GarageBand use .band project files, but when you look at them in any infrastructure apart from the Apple world, which is iCloud Drive or your devices, they're gonna look like a folder full of files. So it, if you send these to, if you try to send just this .band file to something like Dropbox or Google Drive directly, it is just simply not going to work. So we need to work around that, which I'm gonna show you how to do here. Now the simplest way to share our project file is to tap save to files, and from here, we can put this in any location. So if we wanna save another version of this project to say my iCloud Drive, I can come in here, I can go to Music, and I can tap on Add, and what this is gonna do is gonna basically copy this project, which is currently on my device, over to my iCloud Drive folder to show you how it's done that there. If we tap on iCloud Drive now, and we come down to that Music folder that I shared it to, there it is, never to blame version five is there. So that's a backup copy stored and that's gonna store that on my iCloud drive, meaning that I can have it shared in the cloud off my device. If something happens to this phone or if it crashes or if something goes wrong or it makes some changes, then I can come back to that version and it will be there ready for me. So that is probably the easiest way because you're remaining within Apple's world and Apple's infrastructure. It's gonna make it easy for you to transfer your files because you're keeping them as those .band files right here 
in iOS. Now I know what you may be thinking, Pete, that's all well and good if I wanna keep things in the Apple world, but what if I wanna share, backup, copy my file to Dropbox, to Google Drive, to another cloud storage platform? We can do it, but it just takes an additional step. Let's show you how now, we're gonna tap select. This time I'm gonna use this Live Loops demo, just because it's a smaller file, it'll be quicker to show here. We'll tap in the bottom left on share, we'll tap on project. Now this time, we'll scroll down and the third item along in this bottom row you'll notice is shortcuts. Now if you don't know about shortcuts it's a very cool app it used to be called workflow and then apple bought it and integrated it into ios 12 and now it's called shortcuts and what we can do with shortcuts if we tap on that is we can zip and unzip files so it's a very cool option that we have here using shortcuts because the dot band files are not compatible with things like Dropbox and Google Drive, but zip files definitely are. Now, if you don't know how to set these up or you haven't set this up already, I've got a video about how to set up zip shortcuts in workflow. It's almost the same in shortcuts. I need to update the video, but that's linked up above, down below, and that will be at the end of this video as well. But let's tap on zip and that is going to go into what it's done, or it's already done, is it's archiving those files. And you can see here, we've now got live loops demo.zip. We can even preview the content, which is pretty cool. If you've ever wanted to know what's inside a GarageBand iOS project file, you're about to find out. We'll tap preview content. So we've got a data file, we've got picture files in here, we've got plugin info, and we've even got WAV files. So any audio recorded tracks, the actual stems, the actual recordings are gonna be in here. I'll, I'll let you play with that more in your own time. Let's tap on done. And now it's gonna ask us where we wanna save this. And this is where it gets super cool because anything we have set up in our files app, we can save to. And now if you're not familiar with the files integration in iOS 12 and iOS 11, I've got another video all about that, which I will link right now. And down in the description, you can learn all about that. But once you've integrated Dropbox or Google Drive, you can use these and save out to them just like like you would your iCloud Drive or your device. So let's tap on the Google Drive in this example, and let's go to our GarageBand folder, and we're gonna tap on Add here, and this is going to save that zip file out into our Google Drive. So if we wanna see where that is now, let's just tap on Drive over here to the left. It will load up my folder structure. We'll come down and find GarageBand like so, and there it is. In fact, you can see there's two versions because I did a test run of this originally. Sorry, a little bit behind the curtains there. I need to make sure things work before I show you. So here we go, live loop demo. Look, we've got three versions. Oh, we've got it all over the place here. I think I duplicated one too. Anyway, we've got plenty of versions of this zip file. So that's all well and good, but what about now if we want to bring it back and reopen it? So let's say that you saved it off there or you've got a file from someone else that they've shared via Dropbox or Google Drive. How do I bring it back in to my iPhone? phone or my iPad, convert it back to a .band file, and then open it back in GarageBand. I'm glad you asked. Let's show you how to do that now. Okay, so once we've got these zip files, we have to go out of GarageBand to start working with these. So we're out here in my main screen. I'm going to type in files and tap on my files app to jump here into files. Now let's go to my Google Drive and find one of the three copies of this file that I've created here. There they all are, my live loops demo.zip file. Now you might think, well, let's just open it from here and run the unzip shortcut and surely that will just get our .bam file. But remember, it's going to fail because we're still outside of Apple's little world. It's not going to like us. So the first thing we need to do is copy this back over to on my iPhone, on my iPad or our iCloud drive. So we're going to select, we're going to tap on that one, this third icon along in the bottom, the little folder is our move or copy. We're gonna tap on that. It's gonna ask us where we wanna move this file to. So let's just go on my iPhone into GarageBand and tap, oh, actually that's where it came from. Let's try something else. Let's go iCloud Drive and let's just put it in my music folder here in iCloud Drive, just so we know it's a completely different version or it's just gonna overwrite the old version. So we're gonna tap copy here. It does its thing. It's copying this file across, and there we go. We can now tap on iCloud Drive. Where do we put it? We put it under music, and let's find that zip file for our Live Loops demo. There it is. So now that we have it somewhere that GarageBand and the iOS is gonna like us, we can now select, tap on this file here, hit our share button again. So we're using a very similar process. Scroll down, hit shortcuts, and not surprisingly, going the other way, instead of zipping, we're gonna be unzipping. Let's tap on unzip. It's extracting the archive. It's telling us, yep, here is the project file. We'll hit done, and now it's saying, where do you want this .band file to go? And because we're in the iOS world, it's happy with us to do this. So let's say, yep, 
just drop it in this same folder, in this music folder, hit add, and there it is right next door. So you can see how powerful this is, that if someone else sends you a .zip file via Dropbox, via Google Drive, you put it into your cloud storage, all you need to do is move it across to iCloud or your device, and then unzip it using that shortcut, and immediately you've got yourself a project here and now all we need to do is tap it and it's going to open up back in GarageBand and we're ready to go. So that is super cool. That is a way that we can zip up, back up and then bring back unzip and we've got our project back intact and ready to edit or play. One more quick tip before we finish up here and that is how to share with another person. That's right, you can share your projects right here in iCloud Drive with another user so you can both edit the same file. You can collaborate on I've got a whole video where I show you how to do it. So I'm only going to give you a very brief introduction here, but check out that video linked up above and down below or at the end of the video in the description and you'll see how to do this. But we have to do this in iCloud Drive because what this is doing is it's actually sharing the project, sharing it on iCloud Drive. So we're in iCloud Drive here. We'll go into GarageBand for iOS and if we do our select, and tap on record, vi record vinyl effect, then we can do our share option and tap project. Now, you'll see if we scroll down, there is one additional option here in our bottom row. And if we're in iCloud Drive, we'll have the add people option. If you don't see it, you have probably got it on your device. You need to move it over to your iCloud Drive first. If we tap add people, what we could actually do is we can invite someone either via message, messenger, Gmail, email, however we want, we can send them an invitation. They get a link that will download this version to their iCloud Drive and then they can collaborate with you. So not only do they get a version of it, they can then make changes and that will update over to your version of that same file. So that is a super cool way to share your GarageBand projects with someone in a live environment and you can both add to and contribute to it. So I just wanted to show you that briefly before we finish up here, but that's pretty much going to do it. I hope you found this useful. And yes, there's a few little tweaks and tricks that we have to do here, but it is very easy once you get the hang of it to make sure that you're always able to share, copy and back up your GarageBand projects here in GarageBand. And iOS. And there you go, a pretty simple process, but hopefully these additional little tricks and tips that I've provided here give you some extra information to make it even easier and even more productive for you to be backing up, sharing, and exporting those GarageBand iOS projects. If you've got any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can leave those down in the comments, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks again for sticking around. We've got two more videos linked down below. One of those is how to export the song file if you missed that video. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right corner, or you can head on over to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness.